Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be talking about the concept of an invertible matrix. So earlier, we kind of learned that multiplication of matrices aren't so straightforward and you can't just, mul and you can't just multiply the entries in the matrix correspondingly like you can with addition. Similarly, the concept of division doesn't really exist for a matrix. It doesn't make sense to divide matrices in that kind of way. Kind of like how a matrix multiplication, you can't just multiply the entries through because multiplication of matrices essentially relates linear transformations in a, in a particular way. So the concept of division works in a slightly different way in the concept of, in the idea of a matrix here as well. And we usually talk about the concept of division matrices using the idea of iterable matrices. So how do we define the inverse of a matrix? Well, let me just go ahead and write down some definitions. So there's a definition. So if A is a square matrix, so inverses only make sense if you have a square matrix. So if A is a square matrix, and we can find another matrix of the same size B. So if A and B, actually let me just kind of summarize this in the following way. So if A and B are square matrices, like so. So if A and B are square matrices of the same size and the following holds like so so if a and b are square matrices and the same si uh, of the same size and if the following definition right here holds so a times b is equal to b times a and if this is equal to identity, regardless of which direction you multiply it in, then we say that A, okay, so let me just go clarify that. Then A is invertible and B is the inverse of matrix A. Okay, so if this isn't true, so if no such B matrix can be found, then A is called a singular matrix. So let me just write that down. So if no such B can be found, A is a singular matrix. Okay, so once again, inverses only make sense for square matrices. So if the matrix isn't square, you can define the concept of an inverse. It, does, it doesn't make sense. I should also note, and this is very important, every matrix only has one unique inverse. So matrix inversion right here is unique. So every matrix has exactly one type of inverse. It doesn't make sense to define multiple inverses. You can only have one unique inverse. Kind of like how a function only has one unique inverse in algebra. It doesn't make sense to talk about multiple inverses for a particular matrix. You can only define one matrix or you can only have one matrix inverse for a particular matrix that's given. Okay, so now, Let's do a quick example of a few things and we'll talk about some properties after as well. So let's go ahead and do the following. So given the matrix A, verify that the indicated invert the indicated matrix, verify that the indicated matrix is the inverse. Okay, so 
suppose I give you a equals minus 4, minus 2, 5, and 5. And suppose I tell you that a inverse, which is denoted quite literally by a to the minus 1, is minus 1 half, 1 half, minus 1 over 5, and 2 over 5. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply these out. So a times a inverse. So that's going to be equal to 4. Let me, let me just copy paste this, this, these uh, matrices. So a times a inverse is going to give you the following. So copy and then paste. We don't need that. And then if you move this over here. Okay, if you multiply this out, you'll get identity. And if you go A inverse times A, well, that's going to be this matrix right there, multiplied by this matrix right there. OK, if you go ahead and multiply this out, you'll also get identity. So in other words, A times A inverse is equal to A inverse times A, which is going to equal identity. So indeed, A and in, A inverse are indeed inverses of each other because regardless of which direction you multiply it in, you get identity. So the proof of this is complete. So you can just put a little box there and call it our day. Okay, so let's talk about a few definitions and some properties. So definition. Okay. So if A is a square matrix, so if A is a size n by n, so it's a n by n square matrix, and of course, with if n is bigger than zero, actually, let me just, this notation is a bad here. So if A is a square matrix, and n is bigger than zero, then we have the following situation. a to the negative n is equal to a inverse to the power of n, which is equal to a to the minus 1 times a to the minus 1 times a to the minus 1, and then we keep going. So times dot 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 times a to the minus 1. And how many times do we do this? We do this a total of n times. Okay, so let's do a very quick example of this situation. Okay, so suppose I give you, so compute a to the minus 3 for the given matrix. Okay, so suppose I tell you that A is equal to minus 4, minus 2, 5, and 5. Okay, well, we don't know the inverse of this, but if you take a look, we kind of did this in the last example, and we say that this was the inverse. So that means we know that the inverse is equal to minus 1 over 2, and we verified that this was the inverse, so minus 1 over 2, 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2, and 2 over 5. So this means, by definition, a to the minus 3 is equal to a to the a inverse to the power of 3, meaning that is equal to a inverse times a inverse times a inverse. Okay, so this is equal to this matrix, let me just copy this here, so copy. So this matrix multiplied by this matrix multiplied by this matrix. Okay, well, if you go ahead and multiply this out, you'll get the following matrix. So minus 13 over 200, 11 over 200, minus 11 over 500, and 17 over 500. And that's going to be the matrix that's given there. Okay, so let me just go ahead and box that answer. So 
again, nothing too special. We will do more complicated examples in the next video, but I kind of was, I just kind of wanted to get to the point of how to invert an arbitrary matrix, but we will get there eventually. But let's talk about a few more properties first. So here's some properties of invertible matrices. So let's go ahead and write this down. Okay, so let me just underline that as well while I'm at it. Okay, so if A and B are N by N matrices, and K is a real number, where K is not equal to zero, then the following properties can uphold. Okay, so number one, we already discussed this, but the inverse or A inverse is unique. So every matrix has a unique inverse. Okay, this one should be kind of obvious, but A inverse is also invertible. And the inverse of an inverse, well, that just gives you back the original matrix. Intuitively, that should make sense. I mean, if I have the inverse of a function, and I just take the inverse of that algebraically, I will just get back the original function. The same kind of holds in matrices. Okay, the next one. This is similar to transposes. So, AB is invertible if, of course, they're of suitable size, which they are. So AB is invertible, and AB to the power of negative 1 is equal to B to the negative 1, A to the power of negative 1. So just like transposes, we switch the order when we take the inverse. Okay, next. A to the minus M is invertible. Let me just kind of clean it up a little bit. And a m to the minus 1 is equal to a to the minus 1 m. So a m inverse is equal to a inverse to the m. So we just kind of talked about it earlier in the little theory right here. So this is the exact same thing. Okay, so let's keep going. There's a few more properties we've got to talk about. Okay, so next, k times a is invertible, and of course here, we get k a to the minus 1 is equal to 1 over k a to the minus 1. Okay, next, a transpose is invertible as well. You can think of this quite intuitively for the most part. I mean, most of this kind of holds similar to the properties of real numbers and algebraic expressions. So we can kind of make the same kind of analogy for the most part, except perhaps the switching. And let's see, A transpose is invertible and A transposed inverse is equal to a inverse transpose. So you can switch the order to transpose and invert it, or you could first take the inverse and transpose it. You'll get the same answer. Okay. So there's a few interesting theorems we need to talk about here. So let's talk about this theorem. Okay. So suppose a is an invertible matrix and B, C, D are matrices of the same size as A. Okay, 
So the following kind of holds. So if a times b is equal to a times c, then b equals c. Okay, next one. If a times d is equal to 0, then d equals 0. Okay, now we talk about a few, we now are going to talk about how to find the inverse of a general n by n matrix. But before we can do that, we're going to talk about the idea of an elementary matrix. So let's go ahead and write that down. So an elementary matrix. Okay, so the concept of elementary matrix is really simple, but we're going to be using that a little bit later. So a square matrix is called an elementary matrix if it can be obtained by uh, applying a single row operation to the identity matrix of the same size and vice versa. So basically we can obtain the identity matrix by using a single row operation. So, or we can go from the identity matrix back to the matrix that we started with using a single operation. So for example, we can talk about the following matrices. So something like nine zero zero one is an elementary matrix because of the fact that if we go one over nine times row one, we'll instantly get one zero zero one. Something like this is also an elementary matrix. So example, so something like this. So let me just write the matrix down. So one zero 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 one zero 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 minus seven. 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, and 1. Okay, we could go, for example, we can make this a 1 using a single elementary row operation because it could be going, it could be obtained by going minus 7R3 on I4. So as a result, we can make this into a, into an elementary matrix with a single elementary row operation. So as a result, both of these matrices are elementary matrices. Uh, elementary matrices. So this is an elementary matrix, and it's kind of the same idea with the second one. So we just copy paste that thing. Okay, so that's the second matrix. So both these are elementary matrices. Okay, so let's talk about another kind of definition. And all these are going to lead up to a kind of a general method to find the inverse of any particular matrix. So matrices A and B are said to be role equivalent. If each can be obtained from the other by a finite amount of row operations. So let me just go ahead and write that down. So a finite number of row operations. Okay, 
So yeah, so matrices A and B are row equivalent if each can be obtained from the other by a finite number of row operations. So that's kind of intuitively speaking, that should make sense. So basically I take one matrix, row reduce it using elementary row operations, and after a finite number of operations, we should get back the other matrix. So from A I can get to B with a finite number of operations. Okay, now let's talk about how to find the inverse of an n by n matrix. So let's talk about a particular theorem here. So if we have an n by n matrix, the following are equivalent. Okay, so in mathematics, when I say the following are equivalent, it means that if one of them is true, every single one of the others are also true. So if one of these statements holds, every other statement is automatically true. Okay, so A is invertible. Okay, so if A is invertible, then every other statement that I'm writing right now is has to be true. Okay, so let's just write down all the statements. So the only solution to ax equals zero is the trivial solution. So of course that's when x equals zero. Okay. Next one. A is row equivalent to I n, and of course I n is just an n by n identity matrix. This one is a particularly important one. We're going to come back to that a bit later. Okay, so A is expressible as a product of elementary matrices. Okay, AX equals B has exactly one solution for every N by one matrix B. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the last one. The last one, AX equals B is consistent for every N by one matrix B. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. So basically, if any of these statements are true, all of them are automatically true. So what does this imply? This implies that given any particular n by n matrix, we can apply a finite number of row operations because they're row equivalent to obtain the identity matrix. So if we kind of go about it that way, if it's row, if the matrix A is row equivalent to I, that means by definition, if we start with I, or if we start with A on one side of the matrix, and we have the identity matrix on the other side, and if they're row equivalent, that means after a finite number of row operations, we should, after reducing it to reduce row echelon form, be able to get i n on the left hand side, and then by definition, we should, in theory, be able to get a inverse on the other side because the matrix we're told is invertible. Okay. That's really interesting. This gives us a general algorithm to find the inverse of matrix. Intuitively, that should kind of make sense. Consider the system AX equals B. That means if I multiply both sides by A inverse, well, this is going to give us A inverse AX equals A inverse times B. Well, A inverse times A, as we mentioned, is equal to identity. So X equals A inverse times B. Very interesting. So 
in mathematics, in linear algebra more specifically, dividing of by an inverse, quote unquote, is the same thing as multiplying by the inverse of a matrix. So this is kind of the division equivalent of a matrix. All right, so we have now developed a general algorithm to find the inverse of a matrix using elementary row operations. So basically, we write down our matrix on one side of the well, side one side of the matrix that we want to find the inverse of. You write we write down the identity matrix on the other side, whatever size it is. And then after row reduction, we should get back identity on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we're just gonna get the inverse of the matrix. And that kind of general that lets us get a general kind of method to find the inverse of a matrix in general, regardless of size, as long as it's a square matrix. Okay, so that covers it. That's everything for this video. This was a fairly simple video because I wanted to just talk about how to find the inverse of a matrix. In the next video, we'll talk about using this algorithm to actually do several examples that are a bit more complicated than normal as well, and we'll go from there. So if you have any questions about any of the concepts we talked about, let me know in the comments, I'll be happy to help. But otherwise, if this video really helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll greatly appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and have a great day.